Hello, and thank you for watching this revision video for Handel's and the Glory of the Lord. We will be going through the various essay topics that you may be asked to write about in your GCSE exam. But first, some general information. George Frederick Handel was born on the 23rd of February 1685 in Halle, Germany. He was composer of the Baroque period and he died famous and popular, which was very rare. See Mozart, for example. And the Glory of the Lord is the chorus of Handel's oratorio, Messiah, which was written in 1741 and first performed in Dublin in 1742, before being brought to London a year later. The oratorio consisted of three parts, an aria, a chorus and a recitative. First up is melody. Handel uses four main motifs, which are As you can see, the choir makes use of syllabic and melismatic singing. Next up is tempo and rhythm. There is a 3-4 time signature and what this does is lends a dance time stately feel to the piece. The tempo marking is allegro, which means that the piece is to be played at a brisk pace. At the end of the piece, there is also a general pause before the last four bars, which say Those last four bars are also marked adagio, which means that they are meant to be performed slower. Both of these are meant to make the end sound more dramatic. We also have hemiolas, now these may be a bit hard to get your head around, but it basically means a shift from groups of three beats, which you would expect with the 3-4 time signature, to instead groups of two beats, or a shift from triple to duple meter. In the following extract of the beginning orchestral introduction, you can hear the shift from 1 2 3 1 2 3 to 1 2 1 2 1 2. Now for texture, we can hear an alternation between homophonic, melody and accompaniment, and polyphonic, multiple melodies playing at the same time, textures. Here's an example of homophony. And here's an example of polyphony from the overlapping vocal parts. Note that right at the beginning, at bar 11, there is very brief monophony, as we can literally hear just the alto part sing. Moving on to structure, and the glory of the Lord actually has no set form, unlike the, for example, sonata form seen in a couple of your set works, such as the Raindrop Prelude or Mozart's Symphony in G. Instead, the whole piece is structured around those four motifs that you heard earlier. The last point is that the piece uses a ritornello construction as the orchestral introduction returns or occurs twice later on after the first time it is played. Next up, harmony and tonality. The piece is an A major, and this brings a joyous feel to the piece. And it is also diatonic, meaning it doesn't stray outside the notes of the scale used. The piece modulates to E major, the dominant, and to B major, the secondary dominant. Basically, the dominant of the dominant. This modulation to related keys, as well as the use of cadences, is all part of the piece's functional harmony. If you want an example of non-functional harmony, try playing a piano, but with your face. Listening to peripatia is also an easier and less painful solution, at least to your face anyway. I can't with confidence say the same for your ears. There's one last point to make, and that is there is a plagal cadence right at the end. Oh, 
Right, almost at the end now. Instrumentation. It is sung by an SATV choir, which stands for soprano, alto, tenor and bass. There is a basso continuo group, played by strings and a keyboard instrument, in this case, cello and a harpsichord. The harpsichord plays and improvises of figured bass notation. What figured bass is, is outside the scope of this video. Can't be asked. go find another video on it. Chances are you don't need to know what it is specifically for the exam anyway, just that it exists. There's a small wind section with bassoons and oboes that doubles the string parts. The orchestra itself will occasionally double the vocal parts as well. And finally, dynamics and articulation. There is use of terrace dynamics, where the dynamic level is purely determined by how many parts are playing at one time. If you want soft dynamics, have less instruments play, and vice versa. And that's about it. There's not much for this last section, so be sure to remember that one point. Alright then, as thanks for watching, please do enjoy this Airhorn remix of Handel's and the Glory of the Lord.